Hi, everybody. This is the Central Business Architecture uh, Committee meeting. It is on, uh, what is today? May 7th, uh, 2024. Um, the one agenda item we have is to review the request to paint a previously unpainted brick facade at 132 Main Street, map ID 32C-007. Um, and with that, I open it up to the applicant to make a presentation for the proposed project. Okay. So we'll share my screen. Give me one moment. And uh, I will get started. Let's see. Just for the record, Brian, could you just state who you are and how you're related to oh. the project? My name is Brian Foot. I'm the director of arts and culture and then for the city of Northampton. Uh, I am fostering this project uh, and provide logistical support as well as grant funding support for the project. Uh, I'm going to just start with. Um, I know Paul is here, who's the manager of the gallery, as well as Megan. So I wanted to say hello to them, as well as one of the artists, Kim Carlino, are here. Megan has been my um, uh, contact from our Michelson Galleries, and she's also the designer of the mural uh, design. And Kim Carlino and Ramiro Devaro Comas are the painters and our artists that will be painting the mural. So I'm just going to open up. I think you can see my screen. This is the permission email. I think I've already uploaded it uh, from the gallery to paint the wall uh, that's owned by R. Michelson. And I just want to show the first draft that everybody probably took a, 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 a view on through OpenGov. Um, since then, we've recently got a newer draft that's colored with different, also different characters. And I want to share that as well. Um, and here's the stage we're on right now. And the idea, you know, I've been working at my position for over 10 years now. And uh, in about 2008, I started to, to receive uh, cultural district funds from the Mass Cultural Council. Uh, and myself and some of the other members of the cultural district committee decided that, you know, public art is really important for downtown to keep a vibrant downtown uh and to bring you know people to visit downtown and we've done a couple different murals the one that's going to be very adjacent to this mural was was put up a couple years ago and that is the the large-scale mural by ernesto marange and that's in the back of thorns marketplace um very proud of that work amongst the mother a, a bunch of other um projects that i've helped either foster or been directly involved through funding and or uh, putting just plans together and, and, and trying to get uh, more large scale murals in downtown Northampton. Uh, this idea came about because there was more grant funding available. And I had previous contact with uh, Richard Michelson, who's one of the principals of the our Michelson Gallery, it's named after him. And we had a conversation and he seemed interested and open to um, a collaboration on using his wall for this project. Uh, I think this uh, design uh, is befitting for their wall. These are artists that are represented in their gallery. Um, as you can see, if you would like me to zoom in, I can I can do that a little bit more. I don't know if it's really working. Nope, it's not working the way I want it to work. Uh, the plan is to undergo, if we get this committee decides that we can go forward with this project, uh, the plan would be to start on June 21st and to finish on June 28th. Um, I don't know, I, I don't know if I shared the call with you. If you'd like to take a look at that, the mural summary right here, would you like me to open up that and kind of go over the, the details of that particular document that we've put together? Does that cover the type of paint you're gonna be using or? Sure, yes, uh, it has it in there. Um, one of the, I can go over that right now. One of the stipulations to do this mural is that uh, it's a um, it's a paint called smog armor, 
and in their primer products and they submit or you know they say that their their lab test had proven to reduce air pollution by up to 95 percent in one hour so the mural will be pulling um air pollution out of the air and, and making the air nicer where it is. And that's kind of like the opposite of what mo most paint does. And I require that 50% of the mural be painted with this paint, uh, which I think is an interesting. And that's the same as the the mural that Ernesto Marange did half of that, at least half of that paint. I think all of the paint is is this smog armor paint. Um, and I can, I, I've, I've highlighted some of the things around that particular kind of paint. Do you have any questions regarding the, the paint? Uh, <laughs> Just that it can be used uh, for brick, that it won't harm the brick in any way. So the, you know, I definitely engage with people that know that we need to seal the brick before we use the paint on it. So they'll definitely be sealed with uh, um, a sealant that will not harm the brick in any way. And I can, you know, I can talk to, ask Ramiro or Kim to go into details about the particular sealant they'll be using to, to um, seal the, uh, the brick on that building. Uh, Kim, do you have any insights on that as of today? Hi, everyone. Um, I, you know, working with um, my Sherwin Williams rep. Uh, and working with on other projects, painting on brick, um, the prep right block filler uh, is designed for masonry, and um, that's a product that um, just it protects the brick. It you know all the all the issues that can happen with um, brick and fluorescence and that kind of thing. It's designed specifically for masonry and to protect it. Um, but also to create a nice smooth surface to adhere the, you know, the exterior paint that we'll be using on top of it um, to promote longevity as well. So. And I just want to clarify for the committee um, that the other mural that um, to which Brian was referring on the backside of thorns was painting a previously painted wall. So that one didn't come to the um, Central Business Architecture Committee because it was not um, fresh, you know, raw brick. It was already painted. That's correct. Thank you for clarifying, for clarifying that. Great, is that the conclusion of your presentation? I uh, do have any questions. I was wondering if the committee has any other questions. Uh, I've uh, shared some documents. Uh, I can also inform by, uh, by query, so I, I, that would be, <laughs> I'd love to open it up to the committee to ask any particulars that you're interested in and knowing about the project. Yeah. Do you have a uh, visual of what the mural is gonna look like on the back of the building, that it's a picture of the building with the mural on it? I We do not have a rendering, but I can definitely provide that at a later date, and that would have been a really good idea, jo Joseph. Uh, sorry that I didn't provide that. I have a picture of the the raw building, and I have a picture of the mural, but I have not have I don't have a superimposed because I we just recently received the design the final design. Um, if, if you could put up a picture of the building and then describe where on the building the mural is going to go, that would be useful. okay. Absolutely, I can do that. So here's the photo of the building. Uh -huh. And I'm going to just open up the design and you can kind of see where the 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 windows are in the design where it will overlay. So that's and where the white parts of the design correct. are. Correct. Correct. Okay. And so I'm it's going to take up that whole wall where those windows are. Yep. Okay. So you see it's going to be the whole building will be the back the back of the building will be this large square mural with uh uh children's literature characters on them and i think you know the the, the gallery has painstakingly take gotten permission from all these uh, authors to use their characters in this uh particular design which i give a lot of kudos to because that's that's a lot of work on their end so thank you megan and paul for doing that yeah. 
Um, and that, I might, if, go if, ahead. Uh, I have it up on my screen, um, side mm -hmm. by side. It might be easier to see it if. Oh, I'll yeah, please, I'll uh, please. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. If you want to share your screen, please do. I don't know how to do that with the screen sharing thing. So maybe you have a better command of Zoom than I do. Let's see. Can you see that? Oh, that's much better. So, yes, I think you can see the, the windows right. are yep. these white spots. And so the large banner at the top would go across the top here. Mm -hmm. Um, that's very helpful. Thank yeah, you so and much. I think, sure. And it just for, it'll be partnered with uh, that. Nice. Right? That'll be a pretty okay. energized corner of town. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be just in time for Picture Main Street when we can have people on the back side of Main Street celebrate while construction is going on on the front side. I have big dreams of turning that whole area into a mural gallery, but we'll see how how that goes. But that's definitely like a long term goal to have the back of all the buildings there to be a mural gallery almost. And uh, you know, I have a lot of that's Kim and like Ramiro, my collaborators, a lot to to thank because they've been great, uh, helpful with just informing me about public art and uh, different design processes, and actually. Ramiro did one of the first murals back there 14 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. So, For what it's worth, um, you, uh, keep in mind, I, I'm actually probably, I might be interested in redoing or having a new mural on the side of the downtown Sounds building on Kirkland Way. Um, it's something we can talk about in the future. That would be fantastic. Are there any other uh, questions from the committee? And Carolyn, do we need any input because it hasn't been painted before? Um, is yeah. there something specific in the guidelines about this? There is nothing in the guidelines. It's just that it can't be done without review by the committee. So there's not a specific guideline. I think the issues as you raise them really relate to how is it going to affect the quality of the brick and um, you know, the longevity of the brick, I guess. Um, this also, you can, you know, this is the back side of the building. So we're often focused on the street side, but this is, you can see it from a public way because there's a public street that comes to the back. Um, so definitely different facade than what you would, um, are typically, you know, reviewing. I think the last mural that came to you was the A to Z, the sidewall. And um, again, that was just sort of an evaluation, ensuring that even though that's a newer building that, um, you know, an anomaly building, that the um, paint wouldn't, um, you know, deteriorate the brick. And I think we're also looking at whether the mural would impact any historical significance of the building, but I think because it's, the back side of the building, there isn't really historical features or details that would be lost by being painted. This is also a newer part of the building. So this this part this of the is building is a newer part. So this back side was added later. So the front part of the building is 1913. This back part was added. I, I, I'd have to look and see exactly when, but I think like 1950s. So okay. Is, um, th this is, I, I don't know that it has a historical significance. It may on paper because it's part of the same building, but um, we're not ruining any cultural heritage, you know, um, by by going over this brick like we would on the front. Sure. Other part of your charge, of course, is to, it, I mean, the whole um, reason Central Business Architecture Committee was, you know, created was to ensure that um, there was a maintenance and an increase in um, vitality and vibrancy to the downtown. So um, that's a component as well when you're thinking about painting. And, um, you know, I think, um, 
you could probably argue that adding art as opposed to just painting with plain paint has a different, you know, impact as it relates to creating vibrancy in downtown. Are, I, I, do, um, I have one other question. Are those, there's lintels underneath the windows? Are those, made, are those stone lintels? Good question. I'd have to check. I think so. I think they're just concrete. Uh, I want, um, well, if it's just concrete, I, if it were stone lintels, I wonder if it might make sense to incorporate them into the design in some way um, of the mural. In, in other words, not paint the, the stone, but if it's concrete, then I would probably not care about that. I, um, it's something, I, it's something I would want to think about in, uh, in a project like this. Yeah, it could be limestone, Joe. And it looks I mean, like you could, stone from here. You could condition, if you, if you all felt that this was, um, that was appropriate, you could certainly condition the permit, um, as you stated, where if it's um, some cement, or concrete um, that it could be painted, but if it's stone, natural stone, that it should be left unpainted. I was just looking at what they did on the adjacent property and I don't know. That's useful all... actually to see that. Yeah. Do you think it would those, take away from the mural? Stone. Do you think it would take away from the mural because it looks like the shelving units are, you know, painted the... Yeah. Actually, line. you know, seeing seeing this enlargement of the Thorns mural makes me I not worry about it, but I would I would just want you guys to think about it before you finalize the design. The resolution of this photo is not quite as good. So. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find a better one. It's a, it, a, it I would, don't worry about it. Oh, it's okay. No, I think it's definitely a. Something I mean, we if, if we need about. to know, I'm at the building. I can just run out there and look at it. <laughs> All right, I got a, I got a higher resolution photo right here that was quick. I can just drop it in there into the chat, and then we can all take a look at it. No all problem. Right, can you all. screen share it, Brian? Actually. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's a different angle. It just was uh the most recent one because I was there doing a blocking permit. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. It looks like concrete to me, but I could be wrong. I think. Yeah. I think can it would be hard to tell. Right. Are we gonna? Can we? Should, are we gonna send Paul out? Or? He already <laughs> just ran out. He just <laughs> ran out. Seconds, okay. He'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> I have two questions. Sure. Uh, one for Brian and one for Kim. Um, I was reading the application and I listened to your presentation, Brian. I'm just wondering, so Michelson Galleries is commissioning the project along with um, the Arts Council. And does the owner have did the owner provide permission also? Because it said the owner is someone different. Rich yeah, Michelson the, is the owner of the building. So uh, the first conversation I had was with was was with Rich, and then Rich empowered Megan and Paul to start engaging with me. So I created a draft. I had a it was like a Northampton chance meeting where I saw him in the street. We we're both at Florence Bank. I had a conversation. I reached out to him by email. He's been busy over the last year or so. And then Megan um, picked up the ball like three months ago and we, and we had a meeting and then we, we kind of moved forward quickly to, you know, um, cause the grant has a deadline of uh, June 30th. It's an FY 24 grant. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of accelerated the projects quickly, but uh, definitely Richard uh, has given permission and, uh, and he's, in the know and very I think he's excited about the project if I'm not um if I'm not over Paul is is rich uh, uh, excited about the project oh he's thrilled yeah 
I mean, I, yeah, I, I, think I didn't realize um, Rich was the owner. I read the application wrong. I thought it said that Rich wasn't the owner. Okay. Yes. No, he owns the building. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, he's very excited about getting, and a lot of these are local, local illustrators. So we tried as much as possible to, you know, people from the area, you know, so, so that they see their work up on it as they walk by. So, and, and people know that they're local too. So. Yes. So it is, they are concrete. I just went and checked. Um, they're not. So. Yeah. And flush with the brick. Yes. Um, and then my other question was for Kim, um, you know, have you ever worked with the smog armor and if you have, or if anybody has experience with it, it says that it will last up to five years. I'm just wondering about the maintenance and, um, you know, if it, they're pro that's probably just a, a phrase, a catchphrase in there and it probably lasts longer, but what are the maintenance um, plans for that mural? I haven't personally worked with the smog armor, but Ramiro has pretty extensively. Um, I've worked with uh, Sherwin Williams products, their top commercial grade paints. Um, so I'm very committed to, you know, doing it in a manner that it's going to last as long as possible. So, um, you know, I feel I know that the smog armor. Also, I mean, we can look at the raccoon and that looks the same as the day he finished painting. So, and that's already been two years. So um, as far as maintenance plan, um, you know, I think that it begins with just having the highest quality of materials to begin with. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't foresee there being any issues. I think they last like five to 10 years. Yeah, I think that that's probably just a phrase that they use just to, you know, kind of lowball it a little bit, but five years still is pretty significant. And, you know, maybe some areas will need to be touched up, but um, yeah, I, I foresee it lasting quite a while. Hello. How do you, do, how do you deal I with I can jump in. Or, oh. Oh, God, can I jump in? My name, this is Ramiro. I've worked with Smog Armor. Uh, thank you all for, for having me. Sorry, I just have my baby. So I was just uh, hanging out with him and listening because um, if not, he's going to scream. Um, but um, uh, yeah, the smog armor is great paint. I think what they're saying there is that it removes um, the uh, VOCs and CO2 out of the air from three to five years. Um, after that, it stops. Mm. It, its sustainability aspect stops working, but it is exterior latex paint. Um, so, I mean, we have been painting for it with, for many years. We did a project in 2020, um, was the largest project that we did. And I, uh, I mean, I was there this year or last year and the colors are still very vibrant and, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's great paint. And to the maintenance plan, Joe, did you have a question? I don't want to go. I just, I just do you have a plan for graffiti? Cause somebody's sure to tag at some point. So once the project is complete, the my plan and I, I think everybody's is is to hand the hand the the maintenance over to the gallery. And I think the artists are really like uh and that's how I did it with Thorns as well, because I have very limited budgets for public art, which is none. It's the state grant I apply to every year. So I don't have a, a budget to go around and like touch up murals. So if I do a grant on I mean a, a mural on private property and I'm involved with it, I try to hand over the the maintenance to the property owner. Um and also it gives them, you know as hopefully that the you know they're gonna have the, the mural for five years at least and then they can do it's their private property. So that's the plan how I engage just because of the lack of budget for public art. Um, it, it was not our expectation that Romero and Kim would have any responsibility for touching it. Oh, you muted yourself, Paul. It, it was not. It was not our our understanding that Romero or Kim would have any responsibility touching it up. That 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 would be us. You know. In fact, I think I we even put that in the. Um, in the contract that we wanted the uh, the ability to do that and that they wouldn't have to come back. So if for some reason 
something needed to be changed or touched up or an artist said, you know, oh, my character isn't right or whatever, you know, that, that we'd be able to go and do that. So I don't see that as a, as a problem. Is there any, any more board comment? Um, is there anyone here from the public that has any comments? Somebody just joined us. Yeah, Haley's from the gallery. Oh, great. Okay. Great. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Um, I believe the, the procedure is to ask for a motion. To close and then um, to close the, the hearing, the public hearing. So moved. Okay. Do we need to do roll call for that, Carolyn? Um, yes. So, um, and uh, Melissa, I, did you second that motion? I second I it. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, then, um, Joe, how do you vote? I, I vote to close the meeting. And Melissa? Aye. And Alon? Aye. Aye. Is there any further board discussion? Is there uh, a motion? I'd like to move to approve the project as presented. Is there a second? I get that motion. And roll call. Joe? Yes. Uh, Melissa? Aye. And Elon? Aye. Great. Thank you, everyone. That's unanimous. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And thank you for having a special meeting for us. We really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you so Good much luck. for taking the time. Can't wait to see All it. All right. <laughs> bye, everybody. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you so much. And I don't have any um, other items for today, so we'll have to punt the minutes till the next time that we convene. <laughs> Do we have so. a meeting next week, too? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I haven't had meetings for months and all of a sudden. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, Thanks to you guys. Yeah. So can I get a motion to adjourn? I make a motion so, to adjourn. Second. Okay. So Melissa? Aye. Aye. Joe? Aye. And a lot. Okay. Aye. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank Aye. you, everybody. <laughs>